Any others? If not, we'd like to call up the praise team so that we can sing together now. Detergent number four.
I'd like to welcome anybody who may have just uh, come in late, but also to remind our visitors that we do have a potluck after service, and we'd like to invite you to join us in fellowship to that. And we'd like you to be able to partake of our meal together. Um, as we sort of dwell on this wonderful gift that God has given us in his son, I think it's fitting that we have this opportunity now to, to share how God has um, bore a testimony in our own lives. So if there's anyone here in the congregation that would like to, to give voice of praise to God for something that he has done this last week, or helped you in some manner that you really needed, um, we'd like to invite you to come up front and, and to share if you'd like to. Christine? You have it, Lucky? Okay, I, I, I can just be here. So, um, my, my husband's a beekeeper, and I, when I met him 10 years ago, he was part-time beekeeping, um, but since we've been together, we've been able to make him full-time as a full-time beekeeper, um, but it's always been our dream to open up a ministry, an Adventist ministry on this island, and um, we've, we've talked about like doing, um, basically just doing God's work in a honey store, that would have Adventist books, it's the picture of, of Mike and Ivy at uh, the opening night that we had. Um, so this past Monday, we opened the first honey store in the state of Hawaii. Not just Kauai, but the state of Hawaii in, with God's willingness. And these are the models that we had the whole time. You might recognize some of them, but uh, yeah, I'm their agent. But um, I just want to praise God, you know, for it's, it didn't come without a lot of sacrifice. And it's still going on. So, but nonetheless, our kids are back home and they're helping dad with this new um, ministry. And I just praise God that he just sees, saw us through. And, you know, I just want to tell you, whenever you voice out, what you want to do and you, what you intend to do, the enemy will attack that every single time you've gotten attacked. This has taken years in the making, and we're still trying to build a commercial kitchen in the back so we can serve vegetarian food. So anyway, I praise God for what we have. If you guys want to visit our store while you're here on island, please do so. We're in Lihui. Thank you. I want to thank the church for your support. But, you know, this isn't just a honey house. It's a place where people, we can share our beliefs to people. This is not just a honey store. It's God's store. And anyone who wants to do anything, start a business, whatever they do in life, please Make God your partner. <laughs> oh, the, the store is, it's like Randon's place. Randon has a business, and it's a place of prayer. So we go there Wednesday night and we pray. And that's the same thing I would like to do in our place, is make it a place of prayer, a sanctuary where people can come. So I, I was really encouraged by my daughter, she put so much work into our space, made it really beautiful. I could never have done that by myself. It would probably look like a garage more than a store. But when she was in the mainland, they would do outreach. And so that was her vision for the store, is making it an outreach. And so I just want to encourage anyone who has a business or wants to start a business, let it be an outreach where people can come, make it a place where they can pray, share our beliefs, share our books. We're in the last days. We're told that the great controversy needs to get out to the world. So it's a, open your, your business for that. 
I, I just feel so encouraged. It's a struggle. We don't see very many people coming in. But I know as we grow and share our books, it's worth all of that. So I just want to encourage everyone to do that. I also just wanted to share that our very first group um, that's going to be meeting on Tuesdays at the Hive, the Hive is a gathering place, um, is actually Moms in Prayer International, but the chapter that's on island. So there's some moms. So Tuesdays, 8 a.m., if you guys are wanting to come and pray with other moms, you know, let me know. Anybody else? Brandon. Morning, happy Sabbath. I'm um, not going to take up too much time, but I just wanted to uh, just praise, praise the Lord for this church family. Uh, praise God that we have, uh, that it, I have brothers and sisters in Christ that um, like to do things outside of church as well. Such an encouraging thing. Um, this past weekend, uh, we got the opportunity to, um, it was kind of an impromptu thing, wasn't planned at all. Um, Pastor and Victor and I <laughs> flew out, and then um, James and the whole crew, the running crew, flew out to Oahu um, on a whim, and we didn't even have plans. We didn't know where we were going to stay. Uh, and so we, I, I felt like I was like unmarried and, you know, living that bachelor life again. And um, so I had, I had plans to like, um, kind of tentative plans to like stay with uh, Keith and Leah at the um, HMA dorm. Um, and what ended up happening was we, we didn't get in until late. And so they had to shut the school down. And so there's no way to get into the, the school. And um, except if you hop the fence or whatever, but I didn't want to do that. Anyway, thank, thank God, um, Pastor has a lot of friends over there. And um, some of the interns that he mentors actually opened up their door for us to stay um, in their place. And um, we just, we slept on the floor and um, on the couch. And so um, I was, you know, we got in at like midnight or something like that. And um, praise God that they were up first off and but anyway, um, moving forward, the main reason we went was because we went to uh, support our dear sister Layla um, in running the 50th anniversary um, Honolulu Marathon. Some of you guys, uh, oh, that's a nice pick. Um, this was actually from the Honolulu Star Advertiser. What are the chances that they, they actually shot the crew right there on the right? Pushing Lay right there in the, in the chair. Um, Anyway, I would say, like, if you guys want to do a marathon, this is the way to do it, actually. The, the cart actually, or the bike actually pulls you, and so it almost feels like kind of cheating. Like, <laughs> James, James was like, he was going at like an eight-minute pace or something like that. <laughs> and we were supposed to pace with Janie, because uh, uh, she had kind of set the pace. And um, my last testimony is I just want to praise God for Janie and Paul. They actually, or they planned this whole thing, like, all the routes and like where, where we all would jump in and we didn't run the whole thing. We just, you know, it was in legs. And so um, Pastor Victor and I hopped in at like mile 12 um, and then Leah and Keith were like hopped in at, um, I think it was six or seven, mile six or seven. And then we hopped out and then Paul was like behind the scenes, like, you know, driving the car like around, around the route. I honestly had doubts like that wasn't gonna work, but it worked out perfectly. Like, God had orchestrated this whole thing. And, and so, um, anyway, I want to give praise to God for um, allowing us the opportunity to, to do this and, um, you know, giving us the energy as well, because I didn't train for it at all. And, um, you know, if you guys have done a marathon, it's, it's a pretty intense uh, thing on the body, and you have to train. If you don't, then you'll pay for it, um, unless you're a young, young buck. But um, anyway, praise God. Um, we had fun. And uh, looking forward to doing um, many more together. And um, just a little, like, blip on, we do have a running group on Sundays um, where we actually not only um, encourage each other in, in physical exercise uh, through running and other um, movements, um, but we also pray together. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just special to have that, that group and that, that ability to bond, like, um, outside of church as well, so. Thank you. Yeah. 
So in case you're wondering who's that, you know what, that chair, that, that was, that's me. That was being pushed there. So that was this past Sunday. Um, I had been training to run the full marathon. That was the 50th year. That would have been my fourth, because I did a one virtual. But I had a surgery uh, two weeks before that day, Sunday. I might as well just tell everybody, right? Because everybody knows. So you, you can pray for me too. I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. And I had a bowel resection, so you'll see I'm still a little bloated, I'm still healing. And that was two weeks. We still ran our <laughs> 18 miles two Sundays before that, before I was diagnosed, well, a day before I was diagnosed, because we were just training really hard. And then that happened, and then Pastor and Janie had this crazy idea to push me in a wheelchair, and I was still at the hospital recovering from my surgery. I said, oh, okay, that would still be two weeks post-op, but I think I can. And the Lord amazingly healed me so fast. If it had not been for that training, I was hydrating my body, I was eating the right kind of food, I was staying away from any meat products or dairy products, which I would normally do a month before the race to keep my body and my joints strong. And um, it was pretty amazing how my body just recovered from the surgery. And the doctors and the nurses kept asking me, are you nauseous? Are you feeling faint? Are you fainting? Are you feeling faint? Because my blood count was really, really low. I had a blood transfusion, lost so much blood. And I guess I was supposed to feel nosh, 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 nauseated from the surgery, but I was not at all. So they were really amazed. And I was walking the next day, and I was recovering really fast. We did a trial run, it was fine, the bump was fine, and that day was a very, very beautiful day. Lots of you, I think the whole church was praying for me, including Lawai. The weather was the most perfect weather that I've ever uh, been in, in a race. And I know a lot of our church members were really worried, concerned about me because, you know, it would be hot, and it's long, and it's bumpy, it would be tiring, but praise the Lord, I'm still standing, I didn't end up in a hospital. I'm still here, um, just a little setback this week because I had my, um, my dome port uh, put in this past Tuesday, so it kind of weakened me a little bit, but um, I'm still here, and it's, so, it's such a blessing to have the support of our brothers and sisters and my running buddies and your, or your prayers. Um, I could just stay home and just be depressed and just... Say, I have cancer, you know, I don't want to go on, but you know what, that's not what it is. I mean, the Lord loves me. I have to trust his leading, and wherever he's leading me, I am ready to fight this thing, and uh, I, will need to, I will need your prayers, continued prayers for me. Thank you. Praise the Lord, right, for our sister Layla, and, and everybody in our church that really is supportive of one another when we are going through hardships and, and difficulties, that we can, re we can actually count on our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, when, the, when the world fails us, we know that we've got people that we can count on, and the Lord ultimately is the one we all count on. Sure. Um, now we would like to, oh, do you have another? Another. How are you guys? As you can tell from my accent, you're probably thinking I'm from Guatemala, but I'm from New York. I'm here visiting family. Uh, my buddy Berto, who uh, he grew up in foster care, and he's out here with his two sons, and I'm happy to be here for the next couple weeks. Um, but I was definitely moved by your story, as well as yours, Christine. Um, my wife and I are starting a business, and we are also putting God first. And what is encouraging to me, and I hope is encouraging to everyone here, is that in the third quarter study, we had the crucible. Now, God puts us through trials and tribulations and saves us through trials and tribulations because he's refining us to be more like him in all that we do so we can walk and be like Christ. So when you are presented with these adversities, Rejoice, because he is making you more like him, saving you through those tri tribulations. And also as another word of encouragement, 
I have an auntie, her name is um, Celeste, and she was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And the doctors told her that she was gonna live for, I don't know, maybe another three, six months. So what she did is she dedicated her life to God first. And she started a colonoscopy business where she does um, colonics. And uh, she's alive 20 years after that diagnosis. So if that may be an encouragement to you, it's the same thing. You know, we are purified through the crucible with Christ. And my prayers to everyone here, and it's a pleasure, and thank you very much for welcoming me to your church. Thank you for your testimony. I, I think the ultimate hope and comfort that we have is that whatever the outcome is of our situations, that we know that our destiny is in Christ, that we have something beyond this world now so that we can live better lives now, but we know that the best is yet to come. Uh, any prayer requests at this time you'd like to share? Um, there weren't any in the box this morning that were there. Oh. We have another testimony to make, um, and Lucky is going to put it on. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Paul. This is uh, <laughs> the children here that go to the school, the Kahili school, and what they do up at the garden, the garden program. Uh, it's a blessing. A testimony in itself, as you can see, God bless us with tremendous view, his creation right there at the garden. And what the kids make, you know, we sell them at Kapa Farmer's Market for their uh, children to use the money to buy what they need at the garden or what they use at school here. The school bus got bought with that money too. And the children, they just love the garden work up there, you know. It's Teach them how to malama the aina, take care of the land, how to grow their own vegetables. Um, the animals, they come and help too, like the birds, they eat the bugs, you know, in the ground. <laughs> We're digging up and they're eating the bugs. Teachers come up and help with the children. They have to pull weeds because we grow year round here and take some energy. And it's so nice to have all those little angels to pull weeds with us. And the birds, they're happy. They just <laughs> lamb right by us while we're working. And that's the shama. That's a beautiful song. The kids preparing the, the rose before they plant. And it's all pretty much organic. So that red bed there is ready to be planted. And here's some little ones. That Zach, I think that's Mahia, planting lettuce. John Nakamura is a psychiatrist, and his patients grow little seedlings in little egg containers and brings them up for the children to plant. It's so nice. There's somebody I know that's here today. <laughs> She's a good planter. There's our first pineapple going to be eaten this month. That's Virgie. She's a hard worker. Drives the school bus, do lots of garden work. And my wife, Sandy, she's over there. She's a worker, too. Because we prepare the beds, getting ready to plant. Of course, we have some predators up there, and we have to build things to protect the, the beds. Chickens are always up there, so we use netting well, I use chicken wire to protect the beans as they grow. The, see, the pigs come up, visit the garden every evening. And they got no respect. They're, they don't use the walkways. They just walk right through the beds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we just fix them up and 
God provides. They are all hard workers, I mean. And Robert helped keep our machinery working and with the garden. Virgie cleaning some peanuts. We grow peanuts up there too. And the kids enjoying some of their own vegetables that they grow. Peanut butter fruit. You guys probably never heard of peanut butter fruit, but it tastes like peanut butter. We have lots of citrus fruits up there. Tangelo, avocados. It's kind of going slowly decreasing now, December month, but they're still there. And the bird, you know, he's kind of sorry we're leaving. So he comes sit by the door and says, where are you going? So, and then we're at the market again. Every Wednesdays from 3 to 4.30. And the children help with selling the produce. And you know, that's our church ministry is there at the garden. All the people that come, you know, and we share the word of God with them too. Uh, we're so thankful for all the Lord gives us. So much blessings. You know, righteousness for the land, for the people. And all the proceeds go to the school. Uh, help with the garden program, you know. But we enjoy God's creation up there, beautiful waterfalls. This was just yesterday. Amazing mountain from the garden. To our Heavenly Father in heaven, we give all the glory for the abundant blessing we receive at the Kapaha School Garden, Kaili School Garden. Mahalo, Nui Loha, Kiaku Aloha. Thank you, Paul. It, it's really a, a joy to be able to, to see what these children are given. You know, it's, it's a wonderful experience for all of them. And I know that so many people support the school, and it's well worth it to give these children an excellent um, start in life. Um, are there any prayer requests at this time that you would like to share with the congregation? None? How about silent requests? Oh, Melba. Yes. And for the, the ULO's um, new business ministry. Yeah. Any others? Okay, silent requests? All right, well, if you'd like to join with me in prayer, please bow your heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are so joyful that we can call you our Father in Heaven, that you're close and near to each one of us and to all your children, and that your care for us is very tender and so deep, your love that never ends and your mercies that continue on. And we see your goodness in our own personal lives and just come before you, Lord, in praise and gratitude and in humbleness that we, the sheep of your shepherd, of your pasture, are recipients of such grace, such love, such forgiveness and and each day's blessings that you give to us. And so, Lord, because we believe in your goodness, we come knowing that 
that goodness does not change because of events in our lives, the events of other people's lives. Sometimes things throw a curveball in our way, surprises, and things that happen that we wished had happened differently at the moment. But when we look upon you, those things don't have such power on us because we see who you are and that changes not. So we lift up those in our congregation who are in a place where they are facing serious health concerns. Some things people may have that have never even been voiced amongst us, but are serious um, every day. They must deal with that reality in their lives. But we can press on looking to you. And so we pray for every single person in here, in this room right now, who may have silent requests in their hearts and that you would be with them. And I just hold up those who have voiced their great desire for your intervention in their lives because they have realized how great their need is but how great their faith wants to expand, how much they want to glorify you. And so I just lift up our sister Layla, her family to you as they march through this phase of their life they will be able to stand firm in their faith and to live the life fully that they can through it, and that you would be their comfort through it all. And I pray, Lord, for our Yulo family, for Christine and Mike's the new ministry, the Hive, that you would bless them and prosper them and, and bring people into their place of, of business, that they may be able to minister to people to the heart, not just through their their honey and their products, and eventually their food. But that, Lord, you would make it a place that becomes a real hive of ministry, a hive where people's hearts are ministered to. And we pray for this. We pray, Lord, for others in our church who may be involved or having all sorts of plans that you have inspired to spread the word or to reach out to other people and that you would bless the work of their hands that they are doing at your bidding, that they may be able to see your hand work through their willingness to bring forth fruit. And I just pray for all of us in this room, Lord, who have friends and family, like our, our, our friend who came in and gave his testimony about his own life. His friend, his son, has problems with his back, with his L5, and we just pray for healing for him because it's not... It's not right at this point in time. And I, I know there's many of us who have had back problems and can testify that that is a very painful and uh, really debilitating um, situation to be in. And so may you be with him and your healing mercies be with him according to your will. And I just lift up uh, uh, more and more and more gratitude to you, Lord, because I know that you are going to work in in all these people's lives, and in mine, and in everyone we have prayed for. And you will do what is best in your eyes, and we know that you are good, and the results are in your hand for our, our ultimate eternal benefit. Bless us now, Lord, as we go into our, our worship service hour, and may you touch every heart in this congregation, and may you be with our Elder Paul, that he may be able to deliver the bread of life to us, through the Holy Spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our call of worship today is found in the book of uh, Daniel, chapter 2, verse 23, and says, I thank thee and praise thee. O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Be thy rich 
Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we can come together as believers and to worship this morning with you. We pray that you'll join us. You may prepare our hearts and our minds that we may feel your presence. Teach us this morning. For this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's all stand and sing our opening hymn. Number 565. seated. Now is the time to, uh, for the Kegis to collect our Kegis offering. And there's uh, Kegis offerings uh, asking for support children ministries. And after collection of the Kegis, uh, let us hear a cakey story by Christine Yulo.
Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Okay. I want you to s sit over there, babe. Thank you. Today I want to share with you about how God gave me a gift this Christmas through some secret angels. This week, I think Lucky's going to put a picture up. This week, I ran into my good friend Amy, and she asked me if I wanted to go to a Christmas party with her. She said, this Thursday, 6.30, a bunch of ladies from different churches are having a dinner, but don't bring anything, and wear your pajamas. You see, everyone's wearing pajamas. I'm not in that picture, and I'll tell you why. Auntie Christine loves wearing pajamas to a party. But when Thursday night came, I almost didn't want to go anymore. I had such a long day at work, and I had a lot of things to do. This just went out, okay. Um, so I prayed in my mind, God, do I really need to go? I'm so tired, and I've got so much I can do at home. No one, will miss, no one would miss me if I don't show up, right? Well, God answered me and said, yes, you do need to go. I have something special in mind for you. And also, you told your friends you would be there. So I listened to the Holy Spirit, did some chores, and then I went to the ladies' Christmas party. When I got there, I saw everyone in their Christmas PJs, and ev one of them was even wearing a reindeer suit. My friends were so happy to see me, and I also met new friends. And the restaurant was yu had yummy food. And we did a game. Do you know, guys know what kind of what game we had? You can't answer, Sky. You know this. You know the story. It's a white elephant game. Okay? But remember, she said, don't bring anything. Just wear pajamas. So I didn't bring my gift. Okay, so a bunch of secret angels bought and wrapped up all the gifts for all the ladies there. So when it was my turn to get a gift or to steal a gift, guess what I did? I stole my friend Rhonda's gift. See, I've been praying for the gift she ended up picking. And, when it's, and what's interesting is no one really stole a gift up until I did. People got gift cards to Starbucks and Jamba Juice or fancy coffee cups, crock pots, but Auntie Christine already had too many crock pots. And God knows I don't need another coffee cup or gift card because I already have those too. The one thing I wanted was something I couldn't find here on Kauai. And it's one of those things you have to look at before you buy it. And the, this, this is, I wrapped it back up, but this is the gift that I got at the party. Does anybody want to guess what's inside this? Sky, you can't guess. <laughs> Does anybody else want to know? Okay. Go, Sky, why don't you open it so you can show everybody? <clears throat> you have to stand up. So you have to show everybody. Oh, no, that's not, that's, that's for later. Okay. <laughs> that one. What is this? It's a book, but it's not just a book. What does it look like? It's a Bible, right? But it's a special kind of Bible because it says daily devotional Bible for women. So the reason why I wanted that was because, hold on, I'm going back to my notes. Because... See, I have another good friend named Christina who asked me a few weeks ago, what can she pray for me in my life? And I told her to pray that I would spend time with God every morning before I start my day. God wanted me to go so he can gift me with this devotional Bible. Anyways, while I was at the party, shortly afterwards, my iPhone alarm went off at 8 p.m. It was my alarm to go back home and get ready for bed. So I had to leave the party earlier than everyone else. I snuck out of the party because I have the gift, right? I snuck out of the party, got in my car, and drove home with my gift. Later, my friend Amy heard other women wanted to steal my, my gift and was looking for me and it. Apparently, it was the most prized gift there at the party after they ended the game. 
I told her to tell everyone that I'm sorry I had to leave early, but it was meant to be because when I showed Sky what I got from my secret angels, Sky was so excited. She wanted my gift too. She wanted to read a devotional with me before we go to sleep every night. God wanted me to go to that party because he wanted to bless me and Sky. And he also answered my friend Christina's prayer. Matthew 7, 7 says, 7, 7, 8 says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and who he seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. I want you all to remember to always, always ask and pray for what you want to get and do in this life. And God will give you what you need. And sometimes it's through secret angels. Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for answering our prayers in your perfect timing. Thank you for giving us a day every week to celebrate you, Jesus. Bless this special Sabbath and the secret angels that bought special gifts that is going to each of these children. May they grow up and use their own gifts and talents to glorify you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Kiki's after service. Wait, wait, I have goodies for you guys over here. Sorry. Here, get, pick one. But I also have a bigger gift from the Secret Angels, but it's going to be after service. Just meet me at the green tables, okay? Thank you, Sister Christine, for that wonderful uh, KK story. And now it's uh, time for us to um, collect our uh, tithes and offerings. And uh, this week's appeal is for the local church budget. Maybe call the deacons to come forward and collect our tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come unto thee. O oh Lord, we thank you for this Sabbath. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your guidance, for your blessings, for giving us good health, O oh Lord, and lead us here in this uh, holy church and to praise your name. And Lord, we are giving or returning our the fruits of our sweat as to help for the ministries. May you please bless this amount of money so that it may help to spread thy gospel. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Forgive us, O Lord, to all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
May we call on Man Kim to read the scripture reading, and after reading the scripture reading, um, the special music will be the You Ohana. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading will be found in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18. It says, I also told them how God had been kind to me, and I told them what the king had said to me. Then they answered, let's start rebuilding. So they began to work hard. Good morning and happy Sabbath. This morning we're going to be singing an oldie but a goodie. Side by side we stand. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good to see you all here. I hope you have, I hope you had a good week. It's been a very busy week for us. Um, you know, we had a lot of going on at the school. Uh, we had a busy weekend last week, so we're just trying to 
recover from that and uh, kids are off school for their winter break so it's just a busy p time for for us um, you know as we end the uh, as we near the end of another year, it's, it's always good to kind of pause and to reflect on this past year um, and to be able to preview the highs and lows uh, and to find areas where we can grow um, and where we can uh, reconsider some of the steps that we've or some of the choices that we've made um, and to all ultimately thank God for his leading, um, his goodness, and to continue to pray for um, pray and seek God's help in areas that uh, we're still um, uh, unsettled uh, in. And so it's, you know, if, if anything, as we near the end of another year, I, I um, uh, encourage you to, to consider these things. Uh, on a personal level, <coughs> you know, life can be busy for us. Um, you know, I have the three kids here, my wife, and we have our businesses and um, the church duties and whatnot. So it's often difficult to keep track of time. You know, just the things are just on the go, 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 and um, some of this stuff is just kind of on autopilot. And uh, you blink, and next thing you know, here we are at the end of another year. Um, and life comes fast, and um, sometimes we forget to stop and smell the roses and stop to consider um, God's goodness and how He's been leading you and um, so it's it's something that you know I encourage myself as well as as we um, deal with life and and the pace that it's at um, and so again as we enter into this the end of the year consider these things nonetheless we're here at the end of another year and we all made it this far uh, and I'm sure we can all thank God for his many provisions the fact that we're alive um, is something that we can greatly thank God for. Um, you know, this year we've um, had to deal with several <coughs> uh, deaths uh, and to attend funerals. Um, you know, this is kind of unique, um, and at least the past couple years, you know. Um, I've never had to be a part of these funerals and stuff like that, but um, this is another phase of my life where, you know, I'm seeing more, I'm attending more funerals than weddings. You know, there was an era when all I did was attend weddings. And, and so I think there are different phases, different times, different things in life. And it's all part of what makes up life. Um, and so when we're alive and well and we can attend church, it's definitely something that we can thank God for. <coughs> I'm going to try to keep it short as usual. Uh, in this life, there, are, are, um, there will be many instances where we are directly or indirectly involved in fixing, building, or restoring something. Whether it be our home, our furniture, our car, our relationships, or in my case, um, teeth, where we, we fix, we're always fixing and restoring. <coughs> we fix and restore something that has been, what? Broken or damaged. In the Bible, Many, many years ago, we learned of a, a great building project that took place. The book of Nehemiah tells us of the, the challenges God's people faced as they were held captive. Jerusalem, their beloved city, was in ruins from years of neglect and battles. The city walls and gates needed to be restored or rebuilt. And even after they were freed, it was difficult to do this due to the constant op opposition from the enemies. Nehemiah, who was a high-ranking Jew <coughs> that worked for the king, wept. Upon hearing of the ruins in Jerusalem, he wept. He prayed and fasted for this need on how he can help in restoring that which was broken. His care and desire for God's cause fueled his deep commitment and dedication. In order to complete this work, he shared and inspired others of God's work and his burden to rebuild the ruins in Jerusalem. So others caught up or caught on to his, his commitment, his desire, his energy. 
And they joined and committed to this great cause of restoring that which was broken. Despite the ongoing challenges in restoring the city walls and gates, it was all completed, the Bible tells us, in 52 days. I'm certain that there were external and internal challenges surrounding this work. Whether it may have been supply chain issues, or lack of materials, or setbacks due to injuries, or, or um, challenges with tools, or lack of tools, or even from the enemies. Whatever these challenges may have been, the mission to finish the work was clear, and it was accomplished in 52 days. You know, a couple of things stand out on how this beloved city in ruins was restored and rebuilt. As I read through Nehemiah, some of these things stood out, and these are the things I will share with you this morning. <coughs> we know that Nehemiah, in particular, was instrumental in taking the lead, inspiring others, and organizing this build. The Bible in Nehemiah 1.4 mentions that he wept and mourned for days. He even fasted and prayed for God's leading on the work, and he sought God's help. So it's a reminder that he fasted and he prayed and he sought God's help in this big project. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18 tells us that let us start building. The Bible mentions in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6, so we built the wall. So what do you get there? Not Nehemiah alone, but we. It was a group effort. Also in Nehemiah 4, 6 mentions that the people work with all their hearts, tirelessly. The burden and desire to repair and restore was on the hearts of God's people. They may have been discouraged, ridiculed, sabotaged, or even threatened by the opposition, but the work moved forward because it was in their hearts to do so. They didn't quit or make excuses because this project was very dear to them a cause that they all corporately believed in. When all was said and done, when this great work was completed, they acknowledged that it was possible. It was done with the help of their God. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 16. They didn't take credit. This story is a reminder of what God can do through each of us. Today, our churches are broken and in ruins for we are the church without us this is just a building just like the ruins in Jerusalem we are broken our hearts are broken our minds are broken our health broken marriage is broken relationships broken our spirits broken our lives broken everything broken just like Nehemiah seeing the brokenness Sometimes we can only weep and be saddened by what the enemy has done and is doing or the lack of interest or the care amongst one another. The ruins and brokenness in our lives and communities can seem overwhelming and we all can sense it, yet not much is being done about it. But like Nehemiah, we can go to God with our brokenness and burdens through our prayers. We can seek God's help, God's help in leading, that we too may be involved in this great building up of the church or building up of one another, that we may be inspired and committed to restoring that which was broken. This morning, the question is, where are the Nehemiahs of today? Who will build with us? Are we committed in helping, rest helping to restore the brokenness in man to the image of God? Our commitment and our involvement in this building project may not all look the same. Some may be the toes while the others are the hands. Some may be the tongues while others may be the eyes and the ears. In the body of Christ, there's enough for all of us to be a part of. Just like any
building project, there will be frustrations, setbacks, discouragements. Yet as we share the burdens together, we can play a part or play our part. <coughs> May God's leading be clear to each of us. Nehemiah's story is our story. Br from brokenness to restoration. This is what God wants to do in each of us. May we all play a part in this great building project. May God help us all. Five twenty three in our hymn. Sorry, I know. I think our audio visual. Five hundred twenty three. My faith has found a resting place, not in a man made creed. I trust the ever. died and rose again for me. Enough for me that Jesus says, this is my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him. He will not cast me out. I start and rose again for me. My soul is resting on the word, the living word of God. Salvation in my Savior's name, salvation through Heavenly Father, we ask that you'll help us to better understand the great work that you've trusted us with. We pray that you'll help us to, we pray that you'll break our hearts to, so that you can, you can restore it in you. We pray that you'll encourage us, you may show us. You may help us. Then we may be a part of that res restoration for mankind. Be with us on the Sabbath day. Keep us safe. Uh, may we continue to enjoy your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>